Let's create this bar chart with basic hover. You can hover over the bars and it highlights the one that you've hovered over. We do this by handling the mouse enter and mouse leave events on the bars. Tracking a piece of state called hover datum and then using that to determine the fill of these rectangles. Hover interaction is sort of a gateway drug to all sorts of interactions because once you know which thing you've hovered over, you can do all sorts of things based on that, like show a tooltip, like more information on hover, or in a multi-view setup, you could use that hover to maybe impact other visualizations on the page. So let me start by showing how the mechanics work of knowing which thing you've hovered over and then showing that hovered thing differently. I'll start by forking this responsive bar chart and I'll call it bar chart with basic hover. And with bar charts, the surface area of the bars themselves could serve as a pretty good um, interaction surface. So let's just add some event listeners to our bars. I want to listen for mouse enter and exit. And we can do that with mouse enter and mouse leave. And I'm not a fan of the old school function syntax. Use, let's use the fat arrows. So for each of these, we get an event, which is the DOM event with all sorts of properties. And we also get D, which is the same D that gets passed into anything else. It's the element from the data array. So strategically speaking, I'm thinking, you know, when we get a mouse enter, we set a piece of the state, like hovered uh, datum to be D from here. And then on mouse leave, we just set the state so that hovered datum is maybe undefined or null. But first of all, let's just see if this works by saying console.log D. So sure enough, when I hover, we get various things output, which is great. So now let's set that state by calling set state, passing a function that takes the old state and makes a new state object with hovered datum set to D. And you know, to uh, simplify this, I could just call this hovered datum and use this shorthand and then it fits on one line. Now we just need access to set state, which we can add as an option to this viz function. And then when we invoke that from index.js, we can pass in set state right here. So now if we console.log state we should see it change when we hover. The initial output from console.log state is width and height. But then when I hover, now it changes and we have hovered datum or datum defined. How do I pronounce this? Datum. Datum. Okay. Okay. And then if I hover over something else, it changes to be, uh, in this case, Brazil. All right, that's how you can listen for hover and set a piece of state called hovered datum. Now let's use that to show that bar as being different in some way. In the code that renders the bars, they're all black because we're using the default value for fill, which is black, but let's specify that explicitly as a function that compares D to hovered datum or datum. What is it? Datum. 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 Hovered datum. 
So if it is the hovered datum, then let's set it to be black. Otherwise, let's set it to be gray. Now, hovered datum, we don't have access to quite yet. So let me just destructure that from state. And we don't have access to state. So let's add that as an option as well and pass it in from index.js like that. Now when we hover, it shows up as hovered. All right, that's how you can link it up to show the hovered thing. There is a slight problem though because when you hover off of it or when you unhover, it doesn't uh, doesn't register. And that's because we haven't handled mouse leave. So let's do the same as this logic here, but instead of setting this D, we just set hovered datum to be undefined. That should work just fine. And that works. When we leave the bar, it unhovers so to speak. All right, that's how you can implement a basic hover interaction. But I don't quite like it that all the bars are gray at first. I mean, I kind of want it so that it looked like it did before, but then when you hover, all the non-hovered bars sort of fade out into gray, but the hovered one remains black. How could we do that? It's a very common need. Well, it all comes down to this definition of fill. We can add a check here that says, is hover datum even defined? If so, then use this logic here. Otherwise, just make it black. So what this logic says is, only if there is a hover datum then do we differentiate the hovered versus non-hovered. If there is nothing hovered, then everything is black. So now it restores the chart to its working order, but then when you hover, it only highlights the one that you've hovered on. All right, that's how you can make a bar chart that is responsive and interactive. To recap the changes that we made, when invoking our viz function, we pass in state and set state so that inside the viz function, we can destructure them from our options object and use them when handling the mouse enter and mouse leave events. On mouse enter, on any of these rectangles, we get the event and the hovered datum datum which we use to call set state passing a function that uses immutable update patterns to construct a new state object with all the properties on the previous version of the state and also hovered datum set to the value of hovered datum that we get from the mouse enter and then on mouse leave we set hovered datum to be undefined. And then in the rendering logic, we use hovered datum by destructuring it out of the state and then using it in this conditional logic that defines the fill. And this uses some nested ternary expressions to say, yo, is there even a hovered datum? If so, then if D is equal to the hover datum, it's going to be black. Otherwise, it's going to be gray and sort of faded out into the background. But if there's not any hover datum at all, then just make all of the bars black. And here's a challenge for you. Add this interaction to a bar chart or other visualization that you have created. Thanks for watching and good luck.